Okay, so we've got two kilograms resting on a plane where the coefficient of friction is 0.13 um, and six kilograms there. So um, I'm going to guess that the six kilograms is going to accelerate straight down. That's my first thing, right, is to guess the direction of the acceleration and drag this guy up the plane, right? So there's the direction of the acceleration. Up the plane becomes positive and then somewhat surprisingly down is positive, okay? Now the forces acting on this guy are the tension upward, right? And then the force of gravity downward, which is 6 times 9.8, 9.81. So 6 times 9.81 is 58.86. And since we're going to make this accelerate down, this guy becomes the protagonist and the antagonist. Okay, and so we have an equation um, of 58.86 minus T equals 6 times A. And it's weird, but because we're saying it's accelerating down and because we always make the acceleration positive, the net force that's causing the acceleration is positive. Okay, so now let's look at this guy here. Um, we're going to have, as it slides this way, we're going to have a force of friction this way, right? And we're going to have a parallel force this way, right? Parallel component of Earth's gravity, right? So the parallel force is uh, uh, mg sine theta, right? So that's 2 times 9.81 times the sine of 30. Okay, what is that? 2 times 9.81 times the sine of 30. It's 9.81. <laughs> Look at that. Because, of course, the sine of 30 is a half, and 2 is 2. And, yeah, that there it is, right? Okay, so that's 9.81 newtons down the plane, right? Okay. And then the, the force of friction is going to be is going to be mu times the normal force, which is mu times mg sine, or cos theta, right? Right? Because mg cos theta will become the perpendicular force. Uh, and so that equals, uh, what is it, 0.13 times uh, 2 times 9.81 times cos 30. This doesn't come out even, so 0 0.13 times 2 times 9.81 times cosine of 30. Let's make sure we're doing this right. I'm going to store that in some variable. There we go. Okay, so 2.209. Right? So in this direction, we've got the tension up the plane, right? We've got these forces down the plane, which somehow I drew the arrows longer than the tension, but it can't be, right? Um, and so uh, and for this guy here, this is going to be positive. These guys, the force of friction is... 2.209, that guy's going to be negative. The parallel force is 9.81 newtons, and that guy's negative, right? So now we're all set. We're going to go uh, T minus the force of friction uh, minus the parallel force, 9.81, uh, equals uh, the mass, which is 2 times A, right? And now we're set. Now we can just add these together. If we add them, here we have negative t, here we have positive t, and uh, it's all going to add up, and t will be eliminated, right? So uh, let's see. Uh, 6a plus 2a is 8a. And then here we've got um, the t's go away, but 58.86 um, minus that number minus 9.81 is 46.841 equals 8a. So now we're going to divide by 8. We get 855, and that's 5.9, right? So there's that answer with two sig figs, right? And now let's figure out the uh, tension here. 
Okay, so uh, which ones? This is the simplest one to find the tension with. So let's, let's do, cut off a little box here, right? So we use this guy here, uh, 58.86 minus T equals 6 times 5.855. Right, so we just plug into this. Um, and so 58.86 minus this equals T, right? So 58.86 minus uh, 6 times the answer I just got, okay, is 23.7. T equals 23.73, right? Okay, so 24 newtons with two sig figs. Right, so step one, guess the direction of the acceleration set up the F equals MA equation, and that, that's going to involve figuring out the forces that you normally do. You can't solve them because you don't know um, one of the forces and you don't know the acceleration, right? And then solve for T and A. That always involves just adding these things together. That's all there is to it. All right.